Kia Nick from Air New Zealand, and I'm coming at you live from Brisbane International Airport, right in front of our Air New Zealand check-in counter. Firstly, I just want to thank each and every one of my amazing travel agents for your support and for your nomination for this year's NTIA Award, Best Category, Best Airline Executive, Air. I'm incredibly humbled and honoured for the nomination. Air New Zealand, of course, we're one of the world's biggest airlines. Within Australia, we have an incredible brand reputation and across our industry partners, we're very well known and loved. This is our 82nd year in operation for Air New Zealand. And on the ground, our head office is based out of Sydney with an amazing support network ranging from marketing, inside sales, finance, and uh, all the support team that we could ask for. On the ground, we have 10 incredible executives or BDMs spread all the way from WA, South Australia, Melbourne, New South Wales, all the way up to Queensland, where I'm based. On top of that, we have two national account managers and we also have a head of sales. I think this support that we have on the ground really indicates the direction Air New Zealand's heading that we really want to support our trade partners and we do it so effectively. So come with me as I take you on a little tour of the airport here in Brisbane and answer a few little questions and put into context why I'm deserving to win this year's NTIA award for best sales exec airline. So after that intro, I've made my way over to our airport operation manager's room. So we do have a little office here at the airport and I'm very fortunate that the team have actually let me take over their space for a few minutes. So shout out to them, thank you. I wanted to spend a few minutes, uh, I guess, letting you know a little bit more about myself and my journey here in the travel industry. So I started out at STA Travel as a retail travel consultant, and I was there at STA Travel for close to eight years. I then was very fortunate to move across to a position with Air New Zealand, and I started out in the groups team. So I was with the groups team for two years, and I tell you what, that taught me a great deal. Anyone working in groups across any airline, uh, my hat's off to you because it is an incredibly hard and difficult job. And I guess that position taught me a few things. It taught me great patience and real fine attention to detail. And after my experience in the groups team, I then moved into inside sales. So that was basically supporting our trade partners uh, and anything to do with our sales or account managers out on the road, if they needed support or assistance, we were their team and back up. And I gained incredible skills in terms of inside sales, getting a more thorough understanding of our products, our policies, and the systems that we use. And that kind of skill, that what I learned there in that team and that department, I've been able to carry on with me through to my current position. And after the sales, uh, an inside sales position, I moved through to a, what we call a business development representative role. It was based in Sydney, and uh, I guess I was looking after all our sort of um, mid to sort of lower end earners based from WA, South Australia, and Victoria. So it was quite a challenging role, uh, but I did enjoy that for a couple of years, and then I was very fortunate in 2017 moving to a... Uh, a permanent account manager role up here in Queensland. So I made the brave move over the border, uh, at which point I've been looking after all our accounts up here ever since. And again, I'm very fortunate, I guess, because in that time, I've been able to look after all aspects of our trade partners, starting out looking after our wholesalers, TMC partners and corporates, along with our, uh, I guess, our independent agents. After a few years, I moved across to the Hello World account uh, which I enjoyed immensely. And then right up to the pandemic, or round about the time of the pandemic, I took over as an account manager for Flight Centre. So I feel that I'm whole, fully rounded and trained uh, across all aspects of our different consortiums. And it's a real skill set, you know, to be able to walk in to a travel agent, especially now coming out of the pandemic where I look after all accounts. Coming out of that uh, pandemic, walk into a store, you know, it's a retail store, it's a very different conversation you have with them. And then two minutes or five minutes later, you drive down the road and you're into uh, with a wholesaler. You know, you've got your wholesaler hat on and you're having a very different conversation around uh, the team there. And maybe you finish the day calling in to see a corporate par uh, a partner. 
And once again, it's a very different conversation uh, that you're having there. So it's a real developed, uh, very specific skill set to have to manage a vast, uh, different amount of consortiums all at once. And I think what I've really been able to develop is that inside sales skills that I had experience with in New Zealand for a few years in that team. A lot of that knowledge of, of product, of our fares, of our policies, uh, the, the real intricate, tricky details uh, that make up the complexity of selling air, I've been able to implement that into my, uh, my position as a sales manager for Air New Zealand. And, and that's really drilled down to helping our customers whenever they have issues. I can walk into a store and they can turn their screen around and say, I don't really understand this fare, or can you help me look at the history of this ticket? Uh, and I have that ability to take it one step further and really assist our passengers and our customers at point of sale. Another thing which I, uh, I really place value on uh, the importance of training. So I, I, I think education is key, irrespective of which industry you're in. And I put a great importance of that um, as, as a key value when I'm out there on the road. I love training our trade partners. I love sharing updates and key pieces of information to help them develop their own skill set and to help them at point of sale confidently and more passionately sell our product. And also, I guess in terms of overall value in my career, I, I really value the connection I have with the people I've met along the way, our key trade partners, all our industry uh, folk, I, the, the, the connections that I've made in my career at Air New Zealand, it, it's been phenomenal and I'm forever grateful for that. I'd just like to start by saying I am deeply passionate about the travel agents that I look after within my remit. And I'm very dedicated to ensuring that we see them succeed across all aspects of what they sell, but especially when they're selling in New Zealand. I'd like to give you a few examples here or a couple of examples now, uh, I guess, of how I demonstrate that commitment to ensuring that they do succeed. So first and foremost, I do roll out dedicated and targeted training sessions across all my portfolio. Now, this isn't unique uh, activity, you know, it's not unique to me, training, but I, I like to think what I do is very segmented and it's quite different to what my counterparts do across the business. And I know it's very different to what a lot of other reps out there across airlines are doing as well. Uh, firstly, my training session sees me behind the desk with the agents, whether it's before the shop opens or maybe uh, after hours when the business is closed. Uh, but I do spend that time with the agents behind the desk in the system. Now I roll out a few practice examples and together we nut out an itinerary or we do a few little combo options in the GDS. And, and what I think this does, it gives the agent a real connection, not just to our brand, but to how they sell us and how they sell us more effectively. Now I've mentioned before, education is key and I place a great emphasis on this. But I also like to make sure that my updates, you know, it's, it, it's a training session. It's not just dropping in a flyer or it's talking about the warm and fuzzy stuff of product or, hey guys, here's a new destination or here's a picture of our seats on board the aircraft. I like to go that step further. And rather than going in and, 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 and talking at our agents, I like to give them the opportunity of putting that example into practice. And I've found this has really helped our agents. It's encouraged their learning. It's stimulated their understanding of our airfares and indeed our products. And it bridges that connection with us. It also upskills the travel agents. It gives them a real belief in what they're selling. And from a supplier point of view, it keeps us front of mind and it really helps me drive that relationship with my travel agents. And I guess the other example I want to give you today is uh, around myself being a really credible and reliable trade partner. At Air New Zealand, we don't really often reference ourselves as sales executives. We like to see ourselves as business and trusted business advisors. And it takes this notion a little bit further rather than just someone who drops off a flyer or comes in and hands out some lollies. We like to take it a little bit step further and 
really see ourselves and work hard at being this trusted business advisor with our trade partners. And where I take great pride, I know I'm very credible with my agents. And ask any of my agents, and they'll tell you that they can get through to me. Same day, I'll ensure that if they call me, I will always pick up their call. And if they're emailing, I will always check my emails. It doesn't matter what time of day, 24 seven, my agents know that they can come to me with an escalation or an issue and it will be looked at. I guess I'm incredibly fortunate because of that inside sales experience I had with Air New Zealand for many years and my experience being a retail travel agent that I know fares really well and I know Air New Zealand fares and our products and our policies extremely well. And all this is sort of uh, geared towards how I help my travel agents. So not only can they come to me with an issue, they'll know that nine times out of 10, I'll be able to fix it on the spot for them. And I'll leave you with this great example of this. So three nights ago, I took the day off work, I'm quite ill. It was about 7.30, quarter to eight, and I was cooking some dinner, and I get a call from one of my agents. I pick it up straight away, and he's working late. He's quite upset because through a very busy day, he's missed a deadline to get one of our tickets issued. It is after hours and I was on a day off, but he called through and I picked up straight away. And what I was able to do for him was turn that around very quickly, provide an authority so that he was able to issue that ticket that evening, done, solved. He moves on to the next booking. He doesn't have to worry about this issue or sit on it for days and wait for an is- uh, a resolution or, or something to be actioned. And I take great pride in this because it really helps my agents know that when they sell Air New Zealand, they have a sales rep, they're ready in the wings, not just to help them with their training and development, but should something go wrong, they know that they've got a safety blanket there uh, manifested in the support that I give them. So these two uh, examples really personify what I do for my trade partners. And I, I believe this really sets me apart in many aspects. So a really good questions come up. How, uh, as an industry, can we get more people back into travel? How do we get more people back into our sector? And I, I'd like to present a few options, a few ideas that I've had, which I think would be very justified. Uh, first and foremost, I think we could certainly form a national committee, um, maybe from all different walks of life and different uh, key areas of travel nationally, we could form a committee to really look at this. And I know I myself would certainly volunteer and put my hand up to be part of a committee like that. I really think there's three things that we could look at to really drive people back or to the travel industry. First and foremost, advertising. Perhaps collectively, we could really look at putting some funds together to advertise through TV, maybe through social media channels and online push that key message that travel is back and it is a great industry to get back into. Maybe some cool, colorful, creative uh, content to put out there. I also think recruitment drives. Now, I've seen this recently in Auckland for their airport. They did a massive recruitment drive and had over 3,000 people on a Saturday morning turn up to show their interest. I reckon what we could do is a, a similar recruitment drive but for travel industry in general. And maybe it's uh, one in each state uh, spread across a month period, but really push again that message that travel is a great option to start a career in or return to. And also in that uh, respect, perhaps we could capitalize on those opportunities. I think they're called school fair career days. So getting into schools early, a little bit like, uh, I guess, the recruiters from the military do. You, you ever see they're very present in schools trying to drive recruitment for the military. And that's taken place over those career days. Let's get them uh, at a moment when they're young and thinking about a career in various fields. Uh, and let's look at that opportunity, because I think it would be a great, great uh, time to really push younger people in and encourage them to join travel. And lastly, I know we probably already work as an industry with TAFE and other various uh, uh, institutions of education, but perhaps we could further engage with TAFE and these educators and, and maybe look as an industry 
and different areas that we, we all come from, rolling into maybe something like a, a scholarship. So maybe Flight Center could have a scholarship, Hello World would have a scholarship, and maybe various cruise lines and airlines could collectively put a scholarship together. And that might encourage more people, especially a younger group, to, to come through and, and, and participate in those courses and really look as a way of entering uh, travel. Because at the end of the day, it is a great industry. And sadly, we have lost quite a few people uh, during the course of the pandemic. So it's a really important thing that we, we get as many people back into travel as things start to ramp up. And here we are at the departure gate and I've got our incredible Dreamliner behind me in the background there. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> And here we are at the Brisbane International Owl Lounge for Air New Zealand. As you see, it is a fantastic space. And I thought it only fitting that we finish here and that I take the opportunity once again to thank my amazing travel agents for the nomination and for NTIA, the judges, the panelists, everyone involved and our industry in general. I truly believe that I'm deserving of this award for best sales executive air. There's no doubt that it's been a very hard time for our industry. We faced incredible challenges over the past two years, but I'm incredibly fortunate to have been still with Air New Zealand, and not just that, but still out there in market, looking after our trade partners during the hard times. I look back and think that as all our suppliers across the industry scale back during the pandemic, I guess the one thing that set me apart was I was still out there with our agents during these hard times. You know, when all that support dried up, when the industry grinded to a halt, keep in mind our trade partners were still probably busier than they ever were before. Actioning refunds, busy getting customers home who were stranded across the world. And I'm really proud I guess of myself to have really helped our trade partners out during that time. You know, I spent a lot of time in store, even when there were no customers lined up, there was no one in store, but our trade partners were certainly still really busy. And I took those opportunities to really connect with my customers, to really spend that time asking the, the deeper questions about, you know, what the challenges they were facing, how we as a company could support them. And I truly believe that myself and Air New Zealand did an incredible job at that. You know, we really supported our trade partners again when so many other people, suppliers and industry uh, reps pull back. You know, at times there was an always uh, a lot to share or talk about with my trade partners, but any changes in policy, uh, any key updates, I always made sure I delivered that in person, in store and I kept my customers across all the changes and updates. I also took the opportunity to work with a lot of our home-based customers, rolling out webinar training sessions, and they're often key focused lunches, which I always attended and sponsored. I think that kept momentum for me as a sales rep going as we came out of the pandemic, because it not only built really solid relationships with my customers, but as it, as it starts to be a little bit of a challenge getting back in to see customers, it's really almost guaranteed me an audience with my uh, trade partners, with my agents, because of that relationship that I spent so long during the pandemic building. There's no doubt there's a long way ahead. You know, we, we haven't fully bounced back from pandemic yet, but I'm confident the relationships that I've built with my customers the support that I gave them during that challenging time and the continuing focus that I have in working with them to grow their business, I really think that sets me apart. And I believe that's why, for many reasons, that I'm deserving of the award for Best Sales Executive Air. Once again, I hope you enjoyed a little tour today of Brisbane Airport, getting to know a little bit more about myself and Air New Zealand. And I thank you once again for the nomination and I look forward hopefully to seeing you all there in Sydney at the awards night. 
Thank you once again from the bottom of my heart from New Zealand, Matawa. <laughs>